displacement reactions. We've already covered two types of reactions. We've covered synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. So the next um, type of reaction that we're going to be covering are single displacement reactions. And it's also uh, rather simple to identify but very uniquely different from the synthesis and decomposition reactions. In a single displacement reaction, one element replaces another element from another molecule. Okay, I know it sound, might sound a little bit confusing with the terminology, but when you see it, okay, um, you'll, you'll hopefully understand it. So what we are, we're doing here is we're going to be replacing either one metal is going to replace another metal okay and it'll be only one movement okay single or a non-metal will be replacing another non-metal okay so how does this look well in terms of the following so we have one molecule and we have another one so one of these elements are going to switch with one another in our final reaction okay so we've rewritten the same sets of molecules okay but watch what happens now in the re in the uh, product section okay so what happened here is the X replaced the Y okay leaving the Y single so originally this X and we could treat it maybe as a metal the metal let's say replaced the other metal in the following reaction so let's look at, at this in let's say in, in, in a way where maybe we might understand it a little bit better in common places here imagine this a boy and girl partner together to dance at the semi-formal during the reacted song which is playing um, another boy dances as a single so here we have our couple dancing and here's our lonely single individual dancing okay and now the product song comes on next song Okay, and watch what happens here. He snoops on over and partners up with uh, the girl and leaving the guy who was originally dancing in the song, uh, in the first song, on his own single. Okay, so here he pretty much here, he swoops the lonely boy partnering up with the girl, leaving the other boy to be single. Okay, so remember, it would be a metal changing with another metal or a non-metal combining with another non-metal. Now, let's look at it in terms of actual chemistry. So, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between the following compounds. So we have potassium and sodium chloride. Okay, remember uh, the five-step crossover rule for the metal, non-metal, you need to be able to identify. Okay, so we're gonna write the formula of our reactants, potassium and sodium chloride is NaCl. Okay, now in our reactants, okay, we want to try to determine what's going to happen with the products. So we've listed the products, and you don't need to list them again in the, in the products because this is not what's going to happen. It's not going to stay the same. But I want to show you here visually with an animation how and, and which ones move. And we said the metals, okay, here are the metals, okay, here's the one non metal. So obviously, because we have two metals, and we only have the one non-metal, the two metals are going to have to switch places and watch them switch places right now. Okay? And, um, and once we've done that, we also want to make sure that the formula does coincide. Because now, in order for us to put the potassium chloride here together, okay, we've identified metal, non-metal, but then we have to use the, the five-step pretty much crossover rule because it is an ionic compound okay and the last thing that you need to do with all reactions pretty much is balance the equation oops okay which uh, is already balanced there's nothing that needs to be balanced okay write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between the following compounds sodium plus water okay we know sodium is na water h2o but remember, we also said that we can also write water as HOH. And what happens here is by writing it this way, we treat this H as the metal and obviously that as the non-metal. So in other words, 
you can almost identify. We have two metals, okay, two metals, the Na and the H, and we're going to treat the H as a metal, even though we said, you know, a hydrogen is a, in a class of its own. And watch what, what happens. Notice now the two metals uh, change places. We want to make sure, but now notice here, hydrogen is by itself. And what did we say hydrogen is when it's on its own? Well, we said that hydrogen is diatomic. Okay? So because hydrogen is diatomic, we need to put the two there. Okay. Now, what the only thing that's left now is to balance the following equation. And there are the numbers to uh, balance the following equation. And if you are struggling with balancing equations, uh, please refer to uh, previous um, episodes, uh, the previous episode on balancing equations. Zinc plus copper one nitrate. Again, now all the old uh, types of naming, everything that we've studied already up until now in terms of naming. We are looking at naming um, ionic. We're looking at naming uh, polyatomic. So we need to keep those in mind. So we have zinc, the metal, copper one nitrate as the non -met uh, metal and non-metal. So we write out the formula. Remember, we use the crossover rule to identify the CuNO3. Okay. And obviously here, metal, metal, non-metal. So what's going to happen in our final product? Well, the, the two metals are going to rearrange themselves with one another. But now watch what happens with the formula. We just switched them around, but we look at the five-step crossover rule and we realize, well, we need to make some changes because zinc has a plus two charge and that has to be shown in the formula. Okay. And again, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email me as to what that means. But you should be aware of that. You should know that from the previous chapters. Remember, when we're combining zinc and the nit nitrate polyatomic together, we need to use the five-step crossover rule. And we've identified that, well, if you look at the periodic table, zinc is a plus two. Nitrate here is a negative one. So we're going to need to cross over the charges and that's how we got the two that is out there. Now, the only thing that's left is to balance the following equation. Okay. And the balance equation looks as follows. Okay. Last one on this slide here, fluorine plus lithium chloride. Fluorine, remember fluorine is diatomic. Okay, fluorine is diatomic, which means when we're writing out our formula, it's F2. When we combine this, use it, we notice it's a metal non-metal, so we use the five-step crossover rule. Okay, but now notice non-metal. Non-metal. Metal. So we have one metal and two non-metals. So obviously, the two non-metals are gonna have to switch places. Okay, so here we have the same thing written out in our products. But now we know that non-metal, non-metal, two non-metals, only one metal. So it's the two non-metals that are going to have to switch places. Okay. And chlorine, okay, is also diatomic. And that's why uh, the shift was um, to writing the Cl and as a two. Now notice here, LIF again, lithium has a plus one charge, fluorine has a negative one charge. So when they cross over, uh, simplify, remove the ones, uh, the formula ends as um, LIF. 